All right, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Tanya, for that introduction. Uh, I'm totally blushing uh, a thousand percent. But uh, yeah, so like Tanya says right here, um, right off of the bat, what I'm going to say is, as you can see, we have The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Uh, that's a photo that I used. Uh, that was my reference that I used to create. And as you can see, uh, even though the portraits are very similar, uh, you can see that I still added my own kind of artistic uh, voice to the painting as well. So to start, what I'm going to start with is we are going to do what I did when I first started, and that is to go into the stock brushes. And another thing I want to say is all the stock brushes, uh, not all the stock brushes, but all the brushes in Corel Painter are gorgeous. The paint, uh, the brushes that I used for this particular painting um, was actually all stock brushes. So I will pick something like right out here. So I have a stock brush right here. Um, oops, okay, here we go. So we're gonna use the 6B pencil right here. And as you can see, the cool part about Coral Painter is uh, 2020 is that you're able to go back, all right? So, you know, 2015, 2016. So just in case there might be a brush that you are used to or haven't found, like it's, it's all there. But uh, with all these brushes that we have now, I want people to understand. So I'm in the stock brush, as you can see, real 6B soft pencil. Uh, the 2B, and what I would recommend people to do is to actually go into every individual brush and literally kind of play with every single brush possible, all right? Um, you know, just to really kind of see what, what's really happening, what, what, what it does, and what you want to do is ask yourself questions like, um, what, what does this feel like, you know? Um, does it feel like a ballpoint pen? Does it feel like a pencil? Because these are the questions that is going to help you when it comes to creating. So if you're saying, hey, I wanna create a pencil sketch with a lot of cross hatching, then what pencil is gonna work best for you, right? Um, I love the 6B because it goes fat, thin, and you can do a lot of really, really fun stuff. And that is definitely, oh, uh, there we go. Uh, really, really cool things. Sorry, that was set on gel, so we're on default. And that's the basic thing that I wanna tell people is that we go through the brushes and I want you to kind of really play with every single brush and figure out it's gonna take you a long time 100 percent. that's what it did for me it took me a very long time to figure out hey this brush this brush is cool and you know you can add it to the paper texture oh okay cool that that looks like i can use for something right and i will get into what you can do and and the quote unquote mimic part of it and i'll show you what i consider mimicking a lot of time people who digital paint they think that Digital painting and traditional painting, they're different. Um, they say that digital platform is you're trying to mimic, but the thing is, we're not really mimicking. Um, we're literally painting and drawing, and that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. So as you can see, I'm using uh, square chalk. Um, another one that I really love is oil pastels. Oil pastels is beautiful. It picks up everything on the bottom, as you can see. It gives a nice gradation, and it has like a really cool, cool, cool uh, blending technique, and it does also pick up the paper but sometimes I use a blank paper, so it's very simple. All right, uh, Does any, if any of you guys have any questions about brushes, uh, feel free to ask, but what I'm trying to tell everybody at this webinar is that I am going to be using the stock brushes that it automatically comes with. You can tweak your brushes, you can create your own brushes, but the thing that I love about Crawl Painter is that they already give you a palette of brushes that are literally phenomenal and, and that, uh, you don't need to tweak any of them um, to to kind of mimic other um, other artists. I guess you would say other artists' brushes or other artists' kind of um, how would I say textures? I guess right. Uh, best thing to do is just kind of understand that we are just playing with every single brush that we could possibly get our hands on, and and yeah, that's that's the basic idea of what we're trying to do here. Um, so if there's any questions about uh, the stock brushes, uh, feel free to ask, but if you don't, we will move on to the next thing, which becomes, uh, the next thing becomes the gesture, all right? So no one has any questions, we're just gonna move forward. And now if no one knows what a gesture is, a gesture, um, a metaphor that I like to use is, it's a roadmap, it's a drawing painting roadmap for you, the creator, the artist, um, that only really trained artists know what they're looking at, but 90% of the time, a gesture is made for you. It also adds to the element of uh, kind of, uh, what's the right word, a feeling. Um, also kind of gives it movement as well, is what artists would call it. And I'm gonna show you kind of like a couple ways that you can gesture. As you can see, I'm scribbling, that is one way. 
Um, and, but while I'm scribbling, I am drawing down what I know and what I see. And that's the thing, that's where the roadmap comes, right? So it's kind of like a map to kind of tell yourself, okay, well, right here's the ear, right? I have the box, which we'll get into, understand the clavicles are right here. All right, we could draw this. And again, another thing that I always tell people who are starting off when they're drawing is imagine a gesture and and, and just drawing in general. Uh, and just say we're going to play a game of darts. If you had one dart, which symbolizes one line and your target is the picture, what are your chances of if you only had one line and you're trying to kind of mimic what you're seeing and drawing? I don't think the chances of you of hitting that mark is higher, but if you throw millions and millions of darts at it, sooner or later, that line will become the bullseye. So as you can see, it is definitely a gorgeous sloppy drawing, but that is a gesture for me to know and for you to kind of figure out like what works for you and what doesn't. Again, this is my roadmap, but this is one way of gesturing, throwing a lot of lines and, and kind of building up this kind of clay is what I would say. And then you can slowly sculpt away and remove and et cetera, et cetera. So that's one way of gesturing. I'll show you another way of gesturing is we're gonna use the real filbert. And another simple way, and this is kind of how I would or other people would be doing on, um, what would I say, on a, uh, on a painting. Oh, that's a little dark. Woo, okay, we'll just go back here. Okay, so again, what? It's okay, okay, we're good. So again, we're good now. And we are just going little by little. And it could be as simple as that, as a gestural of how you're gonna start. And now I'm gonna use the grainy water and kind of blend it out. All right, and again, this again speaks to me and tells me, okay, well, there's the eyes, there's the nose, and this is where it can starts off. And then we will use the oil pastel and get to it. We can block it in and we'll get into blocking as well. And again, slowly going at it, all right? And it could be as simple as that as a gesture as well for people who are um, wondering. And if, again, any questions about gesturing, please feel free to drop, in the, drop it in. And if we don't get to it, that's fine too. You can always contact me outside of the webinar and I'm more than willing to answer those questions as well. All right. And so again, far, so good. Colin, excellent. I just wanted to let you know, um, there was a question asking which brush you're using, and okay. you can always see his brushes in the top left, top -left hand corner. corner. Right. That's right. So right now, uh, I've been naming them too. So like I use oil pastels there, real filbert. I'm using a 6B real pencil. So what I'm doing here is just kind of uh, generalizing everything is, is the basic idea. But again, just trying to show you guys you know, what is a gesture and why is it so important? And again, the reason why it's so important is because it's a roadmap. It's a map to tell you and, and afterwards, because you will, you will still have some remnants of your gesture in your art and you will start to kind of find little Bob Ross happy accidents. And what I mean by that is sometimes you'll be like, oh, you know, you'll scribble out here and you'll be like, oh, you know what's okay. We're just gonna keep on going and then you're gonna realize. But another thing I, I wanted to say that I didn't mention as well is that you notice that I haven't erased and I'm treating this as if I was painting. Um, if I'm painting with the oils or an acrylic, there's no erasing, right? So right now we're doing a digital painting and that is what I am doing. I am not mimicking. I am treating this platform as if this was oils, if this was acrylic, if this was watercolor. Well, watercolor would be a little different. I'd be using the digital watercolor that uh, the lovely crow painter has set for us. But again, all right, so we are continuing to gesture as well. All right. And again, one thing uh, I'm always going to repeat is one more time, just in case if people are just coming in right now, these are fundamental rules that are able to uh, 
cut across platforms in a sense of digital to traditional. You use the same methods as if you were to do it uh, digital or traditional. Um, I try to, to, to keep it as realistic as possible uh, in a sense of the medium. And yeah, and that's, that's one thing I would say. <laughs> so again, back on to here. Now I'm gonna touch this paper here and we're gonna look, and I do like this one, which is the old cotton canvas, right? So the brightness, and then we just kind of scribble it off. And again, a roadmap for me and for you guys to kind of understand how an individual mind works, you can actually read it through their gestures. All right, so, okay, we are gonna continue to keep gesturing a bit. And then, <clears throat> all right, and then again, other people, you can definitely mix your own colors, or if you wanna eye drop and then like, you know, touch a color on the original photos, you can do that as well. And I am now using a square chalk 35, all right? And go right back to the blank paper, uh, zero contrast, zero brightness, gives it a very plain, plain Jane look, right? There's nothing, there's no textures behind it, but again, just trying to show you guys how I do the do. And it doesn't matter, like I said, right off the bat, it's not gonna look like the rock when it comes to this. A gesture is not supposed to be the Mona Lisa, it's not supposed to be a complete drawing, it's supposed to be, like I said, a generality. Now there's other ways like you can enlarge it as well. Like, so when I look at this, I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, it needs to be a little bit bigger. And if I wanna drag it down, you can do that as well. That to me is one element of digital painting that you can, or digital work that you can do uh, that you can't do in real life, right? But uh, normally I usually would try to minimize that, but I would just redo it again. And that's how I would go. Might be tedious, but Everything about what I'm trying to show you guys as well is it doesn't happen really quickly. Um, that painting that you saw that I did earlier of the rock, it that took a couple hours. So you guys are getting a really condensed um, lesson uh, in a short amount of time. So you know by the time I'm done all of this, it's not going to look like the rock, but it should give you the idea of hey, you know what, um, this is actually beginning to have the elements of what it took to create the rock. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna move on to the next topic, which is boxes. All right, 3D boxes. Um, no one really knows what that is. Um, it is a, I don't wanna say it's a visual trick, but it is a visual trick. <laughs> it, it's not a visual trick, but it is a visual trick, but a visual cue for um, artists to kind of tell people about perspective and structure and all of those lovely, lovely things. So I already started uh, one for you guys to show you. Uh, this is where boxes kind of come in handy. And this also, again, uh, crosses not just one genre of portrait painting. This crosses, as you can see, still life, um, clothing drawing, you know, uh, fabric studies, um, human anatomy drawings, um, anime, cartoons, like I said, this is literally 101 drawing uh, foundations or painting foundations. And as you can see a box now, what's so important about it is that you're capable of looking at this box um, because we have a flat surface, which is just a paper, paper, canvas, uh, digital canvas, whatever you wanna use to, to kind of illustrate your point of view. And you want people to understand that you are trying to show depth with inside this one dimension, which is just this paper. And how we humans figured it out is um, boxes, right? When we were younger, we used to do this little trick. I'm pretty sure Tanya did it when we were all young. You draw two boxes, right? And then you connect the lines, right? And then we were like, whoa, that's a 3D box. That's so cool. Now you take that 3D box and you can now like I was saying with the gesturing and, 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 and building up like a clay, you can now form a face, anything, if, a, if it's a, a car, anything like that. But I use faces because I love drawing portraits. And- Hey Colin. Yep. John is wondering, and we did mention this in the webinar description, but if you're using an Intuos Pro or a- Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I knew I forgot something to start with. Uh, yeah, so I am using uh, a Wacom Cintiq 13 inch. Uh, it's about a three-year-old tablet. 
So I am drawing on the screen, but before that I was using an Intuos Pro back in the day. Um, but this tablet that I have now is three years old. It's pretty old, but uh, yeah, so I am drawing on, on the screen. Um, now, one thing I can tell you is like, yeah, people are gonna say, oh, but it's gonna be different. But I started not drawing on the screen. And I would definitely say that there is a slight difference when you're looking down and drawing or looking forward and seeing the the drawing happen right underneath your hand. That's more of a natural um, progression. Most people are not used to the whole like not looking at their hands. But one thing, one one major tip for all of the Intuos users is if uh, you're young, you'll you'll learn this down the road. But when you're driving no one's staring at their hands and no one's staring at the steering wheel when they're driving. They always tell you to look forward. So use that because that's that's what helped me when I was doing it in tools. So when I would be looking, not at my hands, I'd be looking at the screen and just knowing that my hand is going to be um, going where my eyes are telling it to go. Um, and so another thing about boxes, what's really cool is you can pick a side of a box and you can literally tell where the shadow will be. So just say we want to light up one side, we would say, okay, if I do this, everyone knows that the light is coming from this side. And again, using boxes, a very simple way of doing it totally helps us figure that out as artists. And this again goes with also helping um, with photography and my filmmaking, all of this kind of comes all together. All right. So again, if it's all shadow here and we color a little bit here, then we know that the light is coming from here and a little bit from up here. And again, so as you can see, and then it also helps with perspective. Um, so if I'm looking the camera or whatever is looking up this way, we can see the bottom of the chin, which you can see the bottom of the box. And if the camera is coming from this way, we can see the top of the head. That means the camera is at a higher angle than a lower angle. Um, and then as you can see, you use the box for a side profile as well, trying to keep the proportions correct. And as you can see, you can just kind of etch in, you know, nose, mouth, ear, and chin. All right. Again, just all from a box. And the beauty of a box is not only do you do faces, you can also do, you know, anatomy drawings or even figurative or cartoons or whatever. Like, all right, I'm going to draw a leg here. And then here's the head. And again, using just boxes and et cetera. And boom, 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 boom. There is now a lovely, quick little sketch of a person that can be just chilling, doing a little karate kick or something like that. Maybe he's dancing. But yes, again, using these perspectives and these box drawings, which totally helps. So again, hopefully, you guys understand the, the power of why boxes are so important. And again, so why I'm also showing you this. So we have gestures, we have boxes. And as you can see, there's a gesture within a box. Now, why I was talking about earlier about having like a trained artist kind of look at your gesture and know. So when you go to art school or you go get a mentor, whatever it could be, those are the type of things that they're looking for. If you look carefully, like there's a line right here, I'm still trying to figure out that box, right? And then there's a line right here. So again, I am using geometrical shapes, adding it. So one thing that I'm trying to say here is not only are we drawing what we see, which is the rock, we are also drawing what we know. And that also then kind of leads into uh, the anatomy part of the reference, but that's going to go down a little bit later, but the next part after the gesture and all that, it becomes blocking. But we're going to continue just to kind of talk a little bit more about the gesture in the boxes, as you can see. Now, when you're looking at it, you can sort of form that there is a box within this, this painting that I am creating. All right. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And now we're going to move um, a little bit closer to the middle, which is the kind of we are going with blocking. Now, people don't know what blocking is. It's kind of the best way to describe blocking is generalities is what I would say. So you're generally blocking in the shadows. And what I mean by that is I will take a square chalk because it's one of the most boldest ones that I uh, usually use. And you can just kind of boldly drop in that shadow. And I am right now breaking the rules when it comes to color theory because I am using a warm color. Um, 
as a shadow. But one thing I will tell you after when we're close to being done is that these fundamental rules are just generalities. These are just kind of foundations. When you put in your 10,000 hours and you practice, 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 you're gonna realize that you are capable of breaking those rules. You're able to kind of skip steps. Um, but steps which only you are going to be like, hey, you know what, I think I can do this quicker this way because I figured out you know, box drawings way faster and my perspective is, is a bit like this. And, and you kind of utilize those things. And, it's, and, and the thing about art is it doesn't apply just to art. Um, it applies to life in general, right? There's a foundation way of uh, even Tanya working for the lovely company of Corel. There's a fundamental way of her doing her job. There's a good way, there's a bad way. And uh, she could be, she can cut corners, but she'll know what corners to cut because she's been, you know, at it for a while. So again, just don't look at these fundamental rules and just keeping them as like an art related thing. It can be a life related thing. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right. And if you guys are too young, you guys aren't, it's all good too. You know, when you're in the playground, there's a fundamental rule to play kickball, you know, same thing, basketball. It all comes down to those fundamentals. And that's what I want to show you guys today. Um, that Corel Painter gives artists, amateur uh, professionals, um, hobbyists, they give these tools for us that where we don't need to kind of panic and be like, oh man, I wish I can, you know, have a, a paintbrush that uh, does this, it comes stock. That's the beauty of it right there. So again, as you can see, I am just kind of generally blocking the shadows and you're just kind of, the bigger and the bolder thing, it just kind of applies for as well as watercolors. Uh, but the idea behind blocking is you wanna be able to kind of have these big chunks of paint already there for you to push around. And it also kind of fills in the gaps when it comes to that. So right now, like white paper, right? Now we're gonna die it down. We're gonna drop in a different tone, All right? If I don't like that tone again, like I said, you can always touch touch the, um, the lovely photo reference and keep on pushing. All right, and again, using these generalities of blocking and that is what I'm doing to kind of fill in the negative space. And that's the basic idea when it comes to blocking. I have a couple questions for you. Yay! Shoot. <laughs> Sumaya is wondering if you teach online. Um, Sumaya, I usually do kind of like live streams. I haven't done live streams in a while because I haven't found a platform that is something that I absolutely think it's like, amazing uh, but that's why i'm doing these webinars uh, i think i want to do more of them yeah for sure um, but it, i think it just comes down to demand to be honest with you like i don't mind it as long as i know that the platform is uh is a solid platform to kind of teach on and that's why i kind of i kind of want to do more online stuff so um like i said uh definitely follow me on my social medias i do a lot of teaching and live painting digital and traditional um on my socials and that's what I would do. And then I guess I got to dive into that. Or really what you should be doing is talking to Tanya and telling her like, hey, I think Colin needs like a Corel weekly show. And I think you guys need to get that done. So you know what I'm saying? Uh, no pressure. <laughs> okay, Colin. No pressure. But, you know, I'm just <laughs> saying, you know, supply and demand. That's the basic idea. Supply and demand. All right. So I am, I'm, I'm going to. So as you can see, I'm still kind of hacking away. I'm doing it as quick as possible. And as you can see, if you look carefully, there is a face. And through all of those scribbles and through all of those things, there is a face. Uh, was there any other questions, uh, Tanya? You said there was a couple. So yes. there was teaching. Yes. And what was the other one? Um, Roseanne is What's up, Roseanne? wondering, well, she says you know which corners you can cut because you've right. learned the basics, correct? That's right. That's and, right. And how did you learn those? Um, okay, so I did graduate. So I do have a traditional background when it comes to that. I graduated with a bachelor's in arts and um, under like, I guess, illustration. So illustration animation. Um, and but school and I'm, and I'm not trying to bash the school, but school doesn't really, it didn't really teach me these fundamentals until I met 
a friend of mine who was a mentor. Um, he mentored me and he actually taught me what I'm teaching you guys. And it was just literally, you can find out all this information um, online or again, finding these webinars and kind of going with, uh, you know, asking questions. And the thing about these fundamentals is that they've always been around. It's just that it's kind of like Google is what I would tell people is like, you need to kind of ask the right questions or, or try to find out what the right lessons are. But if you go back into art history, um, Da Vinci's have been doing, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, even Picasso, they all did these uh, fundamental rules of drawing and painting. And that's why I thought it was really important and why I wanted to do this webinar on this topic was because I noticed a lot of people um, who asked me online, to check out their work or kind of, um, you know, give them tips. The, 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 most of the tips when I look at their work is just, yeah, you're kind of lacking these little fundamentals. And I figured what better way to show that you can apply these fundamentals right here on, on uh, Corel Painter. And you can, again, cross platforms from traditional to digital, digital to traditional. And as you can see, like I made a mistake right there. The, the mouth is over here, the nose is over here. And again, it does not matter. Like Bob Ross taught us all, happy little mistakes. Is there any other questions? Uh, hopefully, and shout out to you, Roseanne. Thanks for asking. Feel free to keep asking questions. Don't ever not okay. ask questions. <laughs> um, see, Maya has another one for you. She's noticing yeah, that you're working on one layer and oh, yes, you yes. always do that. Yeah, so uh, good solid good observation i like it uh yeah so what i try to do is like i i said earlier i try to mimic um not mimic why i keep saying that word Ugh, society um uh, i try to treat this as if this was a painting like um and when you have a canvas in front of you there is no like you know layer button one layer button two but there is layers on the on the canvas and what i try to do is i try to add only two layers so i try to have the background um empty because what i like to do is kind of go in with like uh let's say this uh, singer singer sergeant brush and we're gonna get into this as well which is becoming the pushing and pulling aspect but we're, we're jumping a little ahead here uh oh wait why did it do that oops okay so again i like to kind of like go in and just kind of add these so if i wanted to see how things are I can do it this way or you don't you don't have to do it this way too is one thing I would say is you can definitely do it on a uh on one layer as well like you can just work on the canvas as well but I try to do it this way just in case if um, as you can see the end result there is this background and I did paint it exactly where it's just two layers there's a background and then there's the foreground and then if I wanted to add like the thick paint that you see here on this corner uh, let me zoom in on that, All right? Right here, right? Right here on the right corner, the beautiful thick paint brushes. Uh, you can do that as well. Um, like I said, you can do that on this uh, back layer of uh, the canvas. But I try to like, uh, I try to keep it as, as minimalist as possible. Um, okay, so we have this. That is, this is what's blocking, all right? So if anyone wanted to know what blocking is, just kind of like throwing in the colors and just kind of generality, generalizing where the shadow is, where the highlights are, X, Y, Z. Um, now that's blocking. And then now what I'm going to be showing you guys uh, now is about applying anatomy to your reference photo. So what I'm really trying to show here is drawing what you know on top of drawing what you see. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on top of this rock reference photo, right? And I actually wanted to point out that you... We will go over here and I took, so this is, this is one thing that I have. I took a picture of this and why is it not showing? Okay. Okay. Hmm. It's not showing. Okay. Well, maybe I have to open it up. Oh, wait, hold on. We'll do it this way. Sorry. Sorry. Boop. And here. Why is it? <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Oh, it's loading. It's loading. It's loading. It's thinking about it. There you go. So this it, right here. It might be go to webinar oh no, no it's all good. with you a little bit it's okay so i took this photo uh just like tanya was saying i am a filmmaker um i love directing and and photography and whatnot but as you can see it all kind of coincides um so i this i have like a replica skull and why i study this day in day out why does da vinci study anatomy and dead bodies and 
there's a lot of skull drawings, right? Is because you need to know, like I said, you need to educate yourself of what's underneath um, of a human's face. And the reason for that is now I'm going to show you guys. So I'm going to create a new layer here. Boop. All right, new layer on my photo, my reference photo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking this and showing you what's here. So automatically you guys can kind of see that there's a bridge right here that kind of brings down. So if you were to see this uh, replica, you'll see this, oops, that was a little big, my bad, my bad. Uh, you'll begin to see this uh, shadow is following the skull, all right? And I will draw the rocks skull in, uh, in, a, in line, if that makes any sense. So as you can see, drawing what you know instead of drawing what you see, all right? So you can see how it is and then you can see there's a bridge right there that's that line right there which would represent this line right here and then you would say i think roughly about here is where this nice triangle is where the nasal cavity is all right right there and right there and then look at those lovely cheekbones rock has some prominent cheekbones here them cheekbones cut them in all right and this also helps with your box drawing as well because when you're drawing your boxes you still have things, um, what, what artists call them, they're called landmarks. So when you see these little bones that protrude out, like your elbow, your knee, you know, uh, there's no muscle on top of that. It's, there's a lot of muscles on our face, but again, the muscles are based upon like, they come down like here and then it kind of connects to these things and these fibers and then they all kind of connect like that and then it comes in like that. But again, so the basic generality is what I'm showing you guys of, so here's the mouth of the skull, cuts in. All right, and as you can see, if we were to outline his head, and the beauty thing is he doesn't have hair, so this is literally the shape of his head, shape of his skulls like this, and you're following that shape. And one thing I would say, um, so one thing I, I definitely wanted to mention was a lot of time, a lot of artists are gonna say is um, tracing cheating, right? And I'm gonna say, no, it's not because tattoo artists do it, but if you're just tracing and you're drawing what you see and not what you know, as you can see, this is what you would be drawing to show people what you know. 90% um, of the time when someone's tracing a drawing, it's flat because what they're doing is they don't know about these, the human anatomy that's underneath. So for example, um, when you look at the rock's chin here, all right, this is where the, the jawline comes out and then it comes out like this and there's his jaw right there and then his teeth would be here like this okay kind of looks like the day of the dead mask um but the idea is when you're looking at this shadow here you're gonna this is where a photo what people need to realize a photo can look high res super realistic yes it's supposed to pick up the quality but if you're drawing it we flatten the photo um, if you don't put in those boxes where you're telling the viewers that his head is actually, you know, this is the back side of his head and this is the front side of his head, you're going to run into a lot of mistakes um, when it comes to trying to show depth and not make your drawing look flat. Um, so one thing I would say is if you know the human anatomy, then you'll understand like, oh, well, this shadow right here is not really his cheekbone, his cheekbone ends right here. So this right here, bloop, 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 is all like medium tone. All these dark darks here. And, and, and when you're painting, back to the blocking, you can generalize that and block this all in right here as, as a big shadow. And again, you are painting what you know and not what you see, and that adds the real element to it. Ooh, ooh, what is going on here? Ooh, uh, the real element to this. All right, so when it comes to trying to apply these knowledge of anatomy inside of any portrait, any, any drawing in general, because there's always anatomy to any kind of thing living, uh, you need to know these things. Um, you need to add these things in there. Um, it actually will help you create more of a realistic element to your work. Um, and that's what I would definitely tell people to do as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so 
Hey, Colin. Yep, go ahead. I've, I've got a few questions that came in here. So the first yeah. one is, do you recommend learning traditional or painting traditionally before moving to digital? <sighs> I would say like that's that's a really tough question because I, I I think that depends on you as a person because some people may not have the ability to afford paints and and whatnot but if you start with a pencil and pen you can still apply these techniques to that um, but I I I'm going to say they go hand in hand like if you're going to start on a digital platform I would definitely say you should still practice these fundamentals. If you jump onto a digital platform and have zero knowledge about any of the stuff that I'm talking about, I would say, you know, you're going to fall short in the long run of things, right? Um, unless if you come with a different ideology, because most artists, they want to make sure that they have like the best piece of art showing, right? And in order to do that, you have to kind of have like these little check marks. Now you can cheat and do that. That's fine. But a traditional background, I would definitely say at least dabble into it um, where you start that depends on you as a person. But if you're to ask me um, now, if I were to do this now, I think it wouldn't matter what platform I'm on as long as I'm using these kind of fundamental rules. Um, if I started on a digital platform, as long as I'm capable of drawing realistically the same way as I do traditionally, then you're gold. But if one is stronger than the other, then that's where I'm kind of like, um sport analogy i don't know if anyone's gonna know this is kind of like if you're playing basketball you can be like lebron james and you can play all five positions or you can be like an average player and just stick to one position and be very good at that one position not saying they're both bad but there's greatness and, and then there's just like everybody else kind of harsh but that's how i kind of feel but that's again my opinion um but i would definitely say at least try on both sides so if you're putting eight hours in, in, in digital painting, make sure you put eight hours in traditional painting. Um, so, all right, so that's, that's, that's me adding anatomy to, to a reference photo. All right, so just in case people wanted to know that. So we're gonna go back down onto this painting that we have here. And again, using those kind of same ideologies, as you can see, like you can start to begin to see that this is gonna be slowly uh, coming towards us, if that makes any sense. Like the, the painting is slowly coming to, to life. Uh, but still, I am going to darken it up and show you that I am still following those same rules of of anatomy. So at this point, um, I would then kind of kind of come in and generalize again, going back to making the gestures a little bit stronger, uh, putting it a little darker. And yeah, is there any other questions, Sonia? Just in case, if I didn't want, because you said there was a couple. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Okay. Do you well there's some questions about licensing copyright and whether yep. or not you paint celebrities um are you commissioned or do you do it because you enjoy doing it so right, it's kind right. of <laughs> all yeah. of those in one Right okay so the law goes if it's like fan art it's very hard to sue so it would be like the rock it it can't even be the rock to sue me uh, it would have to be the photographer um, because I'm using the photographer's uh, artwork and referencing it. But there's, it's such a gray area when it comes to doing like celebrity portraits and whatnot. Like I, do I enjoy drawing celebrity portraits? Uh, I, I enjoy portraits. Um, but when it comes to the online world, people are going to prefer to like, uh, follow, um, share, retweet, whatever it is, someone that they know. So, you know, they would, the Rocks fan would rather see a painting of the Rock than me painting, you know, um, a painting of Tanya, right? People are gonna be like, who's she? Uh, why, who, who is she? Like, we don't even know her. Does she, is she famous? Is she not? And that's usually the question. So I kind of am doing the portrait paintings of celebrities due to the fact of uh, trying to, get my work out there to the masses. Um, another thing is I have been commissioned uh, to, no, I've never been commissioned to do a celebrity, but people have seen the likeness of what I can do of a celebrity that they have commissioned me to paint them uh, like a portrait of themselves. Um, so that's what I would say. Uh, yeah. And what else was there? There was licensings and whatnot. So yeah, so that's, that's always been the tough thing. So like, 
when I work with Corel, you know, they would usually tell me that I need to paint something that is license free. Um, I think dealing with brands or corporations, that is when you really can't do it. But again, um, in school that I've learned, like when you're working for magazines uh, that, that are like the Hollywood Reporter or anything like that, and they want you to do an illustration of the celebrity, 90% uh, of the times they will try to make sure that there's an X amount of percentage, either it's like a, a cartoony kind of look or uh, it doesn't, it, it could look like the original photo, but I believe that you want to have something where you do something to the photo a little bit more, kind of like what I did with the rock painting, uh, uh, with like this rock painting. So yeah, that's, if that makes sense, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. Yep, I'm, I'm monitoring to see any comments here. Okay. Nadia, this is a good question. She um, She's accustomed to using the cloning because she doesn't have art training. And yep. she's just wondering, would she be able to accomplish the same sort of end results that you have with the rock by using cloning? Um, that goes with what I said earlier. Um, as long as you're adding, not what you see, but what you know. So try your best to really look at the skull, the muscle, have an anatomy book beside you and just look at how, um, how the muscle kind of works. Like, you know, like ooh, there's, there's shadow right here on the rock's cheek, right? Like right here on the rock's cheek and knowing that why is, is that shadow? It's because it's kind of like the light is hitting it and kind of like forming it. So as long as, even if she wants to go as, um, let me see here. Uh, yeah, so even if you wanted to go uh, as little as just say if you you're finding it really difficult to learn the human anatomy um, you don't have that time and that's understandable one thing I would tell you is like I said boxes so if you look at the nose right I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down here right there literally it's a box in a sense everything is a box that's one thing you can break it down and the why is because it helps us with shading so as you can see I am drawing a box all right uh, zoom in a bit. Boop, boop. Okay. And there's the nose. There's the end of the box. We know that it's dark here. So if we shade that in, that's the bottom of the box. And then you want to shade this side because you know that the light is coming from the left side of his face or technically his right side of the face. These are the type of things I'm talking about of drawing what you know and not what you see. Because in reality, there is not a hard shadow here. If you look carefully, it's uh, it's a shadow that kind of falls off. It's a very light shadow compared to what's underneath his eyes. So I am taking my artistic uh, knowledge and putting in what I know and not what I see. And even though you're like, oh, but you can you can do that. You can take the, the you can take you can take the liberty as an artist to do that. Now, same with the highlight. There's a highlight right here on the nose. You just drop that right on top of the part of the top of the box and you know for a fact that it will kind of drift off and you can slowly with the oil pastel slowly gradient that and kind of blend in that nose and again just using the same same brush not using the blending tool using the lovely lovely oil pastel it's one of my favorite brushes and as you can see, you can slowly, lightly begin to see what I'm talking about. Now, see how that falls off? You're like, wait, wait, now that's a sharp, that like Colin put this hard, hard line here, but wait a minute, we can slowly make it fall off. Slowly and surely make it fall off. And that's what I would tell people, like try to add a little bit, just a little, just a little of the knowledge of what you know instead of what you see, because you can do that um, there's nothing wrong with it, but if you're wanting to take your, your art to another level, so just say, you know, you're, you're stuck and, and people are, you try to show everyone your work, right? Or 90% of the time, there's an inspiration. Uh, there's an artist that you like, and, and you, one day you finally meet them at, uh, 
a convention, a Comic Con, something like that, and then you show them your work, and then they're gonna start they're gonna start to look at it the way I look at it analytically, and then they're gonna be like, um, have you thought about box drawings? Have you have you done this? How, do you know about this? And then you're gonna be like, dang, I should have took that extra month to kind of learn this stuff. But again, <laughs> that's just me making up a story. Um, you can you can go on life and go on as a in your art career never knowing any of this, um, but I I believe that if you're trying to become a professional artist or you're trying to make a living off of this, um, you know, you can, I'm going to use the analogy of like a home. You can tile your own floor, right? You can, you can go on YouTube, you can learn all that. Um, but if you're wanting to be a professional floor person, I'm pretty sure you're going to make sure you know the foundations of the house before you start tiling your house, before you're like, you know, you put in cement instead of like certain glues and, and all that kind of stuff. So again, that's just my opinion. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but hopefully it does. And just add in. <laughs> We're enjoying listening to you, Colin. <laughs> Sorry, I'm you just ranting. Lots I'm just of knowledge to share. Matt is wondering, he sees your custom palette of brushes down yep. there, and he's yep. wondering if you might be willing, I, I know you don't customize them, but the nope, set of brushes you use, are you yep. willing to share? Yeah, 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 for sure. So I'll go over or them Or if so, you would just post a list or something of the brushes. Uh, yeah, like we can go over them right now. Like I'll just hover over them. Like, oops, Ooh, come on, come on. Here we go. Come on out, come on out. Here you go. All right. So as you can see, like I'll go over them. Like this is uh, the cover pencil, right? Right. The second one is a uh, 2B pencil and 6B pencil. So as you can see, I have my pencils all in one section. And again, uh, this was, so remember what I said, if you just came in now in the very, very beginning, what I was showing people is like the power of Corel Painter stock brushes. And what I tell people is like, go into the painting, uh, go into your palette and literally go through every single pencil to know what one works best for you. So this may work best for me, but doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work best for you. So as you can see, right, cover pencil, we have 2B pencil, we have a 6B soft pencil, uh, we have the oil pastel. Underneath that, we have the loaded palette knife. And again, all of these brushes, they're stock. I don't play with them at all. I can literally click on these brushes and go to restore, uh, de uh, what's, it, what's the right word? Restall default or um, whatever, the, I, I'm just losing it's my mind right now. Restore Thank default, you. that little reset right on the uh, property bar up there. Yes, 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 yes. So again, you can restore all of them. and. It doesn't bother me because they're all basically stock brushes. Like whatever settings Corel had them at, they're perfect. That's just, again, me, but you can tweak those. Uh, so again, so, okay, so we go from there, uh, we have loaded palette knife, then we go with the drippy, what's this one I clicked on? It is the drippy gelfish. Uh, we also have the variable splatter. Oh, Tanya, I do have a couple of splatter ones. <laughs> uh, and then we also have the tiny splatter airbrush. And then we have the real oil filbert. That's another one that I absolutely love as well because it actually, if you look at it, it has like this beautiful, um, it reminds me so much of oils and which makes sense because it's a real oil filbert, <laughs> you know, you know. Uh, okay, so we have that. And then we have uh, a bristle oils. And then underneath that, we have the real oil smeary. Then we have the famous sergeant brush. And then I have my scratch board tool. And then I have my digital soft velocity airbrush. And then under that one, we have a hard eraser. And then we have a real soft eraser. And then we have a, a sharp chalk. And then we have the square chalk. And then beside that square chalk, we have another square chalk. And then we have, for my blenders, we have a coarse, uh, coarse oily blender two. We have the grainy water. We have the water rake. We have your basic eraser. And then we also have a light liquid scratcher. And then at the bottom here are all my thick paint brushes. So we have the grainy fine, we have the thick bristles. Uh, that one's actually, again, a loaded one. Um, smooth round one, and actually this this one, I, it says new is because actually Corel was giving me that. That was like, that's my brush that they gave me. Uh, and then we also have the heavy loaded palette knife. And then we have the heavy texture palette knife. We have the scruffy bristle. We have the real bristle oil flats, uh, the palette knife oil, and we have the paint tube. So again, all of these brushes, 1000% stock. 
all from here, literally picked from here, dragged onto there. Um, it's just easier for me to kind of pick the ones that I do and I have my go-to, but just say if uh, tomorrow Corel's like, we're going to change all of the brushes, I would go back to exactly what I said from the get. I would go back and I would look at every single brush and find the brushes that work for me. And yeah. Colin, do you have, I realize the rock doesn't have hair, but no, he doesn't. do you have a preferred brush for hair and fur? I, I do. I do. It's a thick brush, actually. It's the um, the scruffle one. It's this one right here. Uh, the the scruffy bristle. And I use that one for like eyebrows. As you can see, it comes pretty nice. It gives that nice uh, textural. And then and the best part about it is like, it looks like really fine, fine hair. And that's what I use for hair. And or fur or anything to that extent. But um, since you're mentioning that as well, I also use, here's a little, here's a little quick little funny thing too. Um, I use the paper texture, the basic paper, and you use the square chalk. And I actually use that for stubble, which is beautiful. It looks like the stubble. So when you bring up the uh, picture right here and you look carefully, that is, that is 100% using the basic brush, uh, the basic paper, and just going through it. And that is what I use for that. And as you can see, that same brush earlier I used for his eyebrows, the thick paint brush, right there. So that is what I use uh, when it comes to uh, hair or anything like that. Back in the day, I used to have to go with like um, generalizing. So I would use like the oil pastel or I would probably use the scratch board and then I would like individually like go in there and do that and I was like that's just way too long and then now since Corel created these thick brushes again stock uh you can just look at that. a couple of swipes now you have look at there's a gradation of hair right there and that is what I would say um okay so now we're gonna move on quickly because I was just uh to the the, the final two steps are kind of like pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling is a technique um, used in painting um, when you knock back the background to bring the foreground. So what I mean by that is if I were to use, uh, let's go with the dark purple and I wanted to knock off the background. So now you can do it two ways. Um, if you want to go to the background and you want to knock off the background, uh, going back onto the canvas, as you can see, it doesn't cover up the foreground, which is what I was working with. But usually that's where you can come in uh over going back onto that first layer and then just kind of going through it but again pushing the background because when you knock back the white background and you make everything purple you can start to see that the highlights will pop up And you can go uh, uh, darker using the Baroque period all right, of blacks, not being afraid. It's not really fully black, it's just adding black to a purple. And as you can see, when you do something like that, you can see how the red begins to look like a shadow. And again, I'm breaking the rule of colors. And uh, usually you would, 90% of the time when you're taught in school, they're gonna be like, if it's a shadow, you gotta put blue on it because it's a cool color. Um, but you know, that's what I was telling you about where you as the artist can take, um, uh, your own artistic, um, artistic, uh, I, your, your artistic, I don't know what, just be the boss as well. <laughs> Pretty much you could be the boss of your own work and you can do it that way. So as you can see, you can use a blue, um, or you can do what I do and I use a red. Uh, because red goes dark as well, and you can really push that red to the darkest dark if you really want to by getting it closer to the black sign. And yeah, and you start to add those dimensions to it. So as you can see, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing the background to bring up the foreground. And when you put in a highlight, so just say the highlight on his head, so it's like close to a white, right? So we're gonna use the we're using the oil filberts and you can literally 
why I love the oil filter is because it reminds you of when you use paint and you just kind of dab it on an oil and you just kind of like blend outwards. And that's the basic idea. So when you look at something like this, all right. And again, it does not look like the rock right now, the painting, this painting underneath, it took me a couple hours to get there, but this is the technique that I used. And this is the, the step-by-step I used to create it. So as you can see, when you look at the, when you look at it beside the background, you can see that the white is really popping forward. And that is what is called pushing and pulling. And that is what I am doing right here. So I usually try to do highlights last. Uh, you can do it uh, whenever you feel, but I usually try to do it last so you can start to see it kind of come to life. And again, remember the box, right? I'm putting that one line right where, and I'll check this out. Um, I'll take the, we'll take this, the oil pastel, and you can put it right there on that line, Oop, too big. And you can just draw that single line. And again, trying to show that there's a box. And this also applies not just to beginners, this also applies to people that are professional. Sometimes, um, you know, as professional artists, we sometimes need to brush up on our fundamentals and and kind of like kick it back old school and be like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna do this so this this webinar is not just meant for you know uh beginners it's meant for everyone in every single level um and that is uh the basic of it the program in itself curl painter gives you a lot of tools uh to do anything you want uh but i i believe that it's up to the artists to kind of display their work, if that makes any sense, like their kind of vision. Um, and and Corel definitely helps you with that. So you can definitely, yeah, so it doesn't look like the rock, right? But that's fine. It's okay. You understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah, that was very informative, Colin. And I know that a lot of people on the webinars, you know, in a lot of cases are kind of new yeah. to digital painting or Corel Painter, and I think this is probably really helpful to them. Yeah. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is, you know, because some people are painting from photos, yep. and you can do that. You can use the cloning tools, and then you could also apply some of these techniques to right. add your own touch to what you're just kind of replicating from the photo. And that would really give it the flair that Colin keeps talking about that's your own personal touch, the swag. Exactly. Uh, So so, uh, the last part of everything was kind of like I, uh, in in the webinar I added like how to add final details to your portraits, right? And and it kind of coincides with exactly what Tanya just said, um, adding your own flair. So I'm gonna take what so again it's good it would take another two three hours for me to continue you know sculpting this photo sculpting sculpting and 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 again um if you wanted to see some of the time lapses that i've done uh go on my socials you can see all that um oh another thing i forgot to tell you so another thing i wanted to tell people as well which i forgot to show was this uh this is actually a painting that i did of a still life of of that skull that you guys saw adding my own elements it doesn't look exactly like that skull but Again, even as an artist like myself, not only do I paint portraits, but I also, like I said, go back to the fundamentals and draw what I know and what I see. You can actually see this time lapse on my Twitter, um, and you can actually see everything that I just taught here in this webinar is put into, I believe, like a three-minute video of a time lapse of me creating that skull. And you can see boxes, blocking, pushing and pulling. Uh, you can see perspectives being created, all of those lovely things right there. Uh, but going to sum this all up, uh, the last part of the, the this beautiful webinar is adding your own little touch. So as you can see, I added my own little touch such as like, you know, DJ representing Dwayne Johnson, his initials. And even though people look at these little red lines, um, they're actually, if you look carefully, I'm following the anatomy and I'm adding these little flares of, okay, you know, I'm trying to show the differential uh of where his uh, where his head kind of pops out and where the background starts 
And as you can see, uh, you know, putting a little storytelling to it, putting an X towards The Rock. If you know anything about who The Rock is and Dwayne Johnson, big personality and, and, and wrestling, like he talks a lot. And I just felt that it was something that'd be very interesting is if I'm like, you know, no talking, put a little, little asterisk to his mouth so that people will focus that he is a very, uh, he, he, you know, makes money off his, uh, off of talking and, um, you know, adding, adding dynamics of like geometrical shapes, right. Adding little characters of this little happy face of a crown of, with a little angry smiley face, you know, adding these little triangles, like all these little elements, um, those are conscious efforts of me trying to put in something that I think looks interesting where it brings the viewers like you kind of have the zigzag and you're looking. So I'm forcing you to either look down and up. And again, it kind of leads in, you follow around, everything kind of goes in this kind of up, down, left, right, looking at everything possible and um, using thick brushes uh, to kind of get these backgrounds, uh, using that oil filbert to kind of get these kind of smeary marks. Um, but yeah, adding, just, just literally adding elements that I think changes when you look at the, the, when you look at the photo and then you look at my painting, um, you can definitely see that, uh, why? Come on. There we go. Uh, you can definitely see there is, they're different. <laughs> if that makes any sense, like they're different, like it's, it's taking, the reference and creating it at your own. So hopefully uh, you guys kind of do that on yourself. So I, I that's pretty much like everything that uh, I can show you guys in, in the beginning. Like this is perfect for anyone on all levels, uh, the fundamental rules. Um, so I'm gonna leave this open for anyone who wants to talk. If Tanya wants to add anything, if Tanya has any questions herself, uh, I'm going to say, yeah, because that's, it's about 205 and I don't want to take up more than Tanya's time because she's a busy lady. <laughs> well, you know what? We did a really good job. I don't think we left any question unanswered. I'll just give it yeah, a minute, a minute or, two. or so here to see if anything else comes in. Yep. But um, yeah, people are saying thank you for, you know, some people forgot about the fundamentals and yeah, it's because need to be reminded yeah, from time it's, to time. And yeah, it's just sometimes we we get so busy that like sometimes I, it's, it's, it's humbling to kind of go back and to look at what it took for because every professional artist that I know, um, like more than 90 percent of the artists that are Krell Painter Masters, um, they all come from, they all kind of do this. They, they, they know these fundamentals and they, and they do them, but they do them so much. And they're, you know, they, they've been in the industry for so long that they've kind of like put their archives of fundamentals to a quicker use. Does that make sense? Like they're, they're, they're so sharp that they don't need to draw a box because they see the box, you know? Um, they don't need to gesture as detailed because they know where the blocking is going to come in. So it's all these kind of things where you can skip these stages, but the number one thing I want people to take from is, is this is where I started. This is how I started. And I put in my 10,000 hours in every one of these things that I showed you guys. And it, it wasn't an overnight thing where I finally got to here. Like I can say like my first digital painting was whew, horrible, but again, I was always, the frustrations that I had is probably the same frustrations that every new person has when it comes to drawing on uh, an Intuos or drawing on a Wacom. It's just like, it doesn't feel like paper. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't move like it. And I remember drawing with other applications and realizing like, what? I have to go tweak the brushes? What? I have to go import brushes? And then I found Corel Painter and I was like, what is this? And then I'm like, whoa their stuff feels and, 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 and moves as if it was like real traditional method, uh, mediums. And I just fell in love with it. And yeah, so I, hopefully the people that are hearing this, they fall in love with the same thing and, and understand that it's going to take time. But if you put your time towards what I showed you today, um, give it one month, 30 days straight, just keep working at those boxes and all that. I promise you, you will go back and look at, you're drawing before that month and realize you just, you just leveled up just like a video game. You just went up one level. And then you're going to realize that if I put more than 30 days into this, it's going to get better and better and better and better. And then, you know, a year goes by, two years go by, then you're gonna be like, Oh wow, Holy crap. I can actually draw a pretty realistic eye using these kind of boxes and, 
gestures and, and blocking and X, Y, Z. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, no more questions have come in, just a bunch Ooh. of thanks from people. And Thank that's you. a good thing. You want to make sure that the questions are answered and it means that you covered everything really well. Yes, that's what so I, 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 I want to give you a huge thanks, Colin. Thank you so much. No, thank you for having and thanks me. Thanks to everybody that joined us today. Yes, definitely. There's thank you for more. taking your time. Yeah, take to, definitely taking your time. And thanks, Anya, for giving me this platform and, and allowing me to kind of like share it. And uh, shout out to the Corel team because it's not just, you know, a small team. It's a big team that that works hard day in and day out to kind of create this platform. So shout out to those people too. Um, but yeah, definitely it was fun. And for anyone that has any other questions, if you're too shy to type it in, that's fine. Uh, message me on my socials. Um, I'm pretty good at responding back to those. And yeah, and just keep, just keep rocking. <laughs> okay, I think they will. People are inspired. They've told me so. Use in the weekend, so, guys. You got the weekends. Get painting. If it's like Chicago, rainy, it's a perfect weekend. But uh, <laughs> Exactly. Or if you have a skylight in your house, <laughs> <laughs> you could paint right underneath the skylight. Just saying. <laughs> and I will have this webinar. I'm going to let it process, and then I will post that up to the YouTube channel a little oh, bit yeah, later yeah, today. Yeah. 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 So for anyone, make sure you, if you, yeah, that's another thing too. If you are too scared, uh, go drop comments on the, on the Corel Painters uh, YouTube channel. And for the people that are watching this, shout out to you guys as well. But again, leave comments, ask questions. Asking questions is actually going to benefit you. So if you're too scared or you're too shy to talk here, talk outside of uh, the webinar. And I'm pretty sure, you know, no question is a dumb question is what I would say. All right, and I will keep an eye out for those questions as well. Okay. So have a great weekend, everybody. I'm going to go Yay. ahead and close down the webinar. All right. Hope to see you next month. Yes. Bye, guys.